Hi everyone, Mahal Haddad here again. So uh, in uh, this new video, I would like to show you a, a Microtech lab. And uh, this lab is going to be with uh, the VLAN. So I have a customer who has a Microtech router in his office. And he told me that I want to separate my wireless to my LAN users. So he wants to use VLANs by separating them on layer two and of course on layer three. So that means that the wireless will be on a separated VLAN than the uh, people who are connected to uh, the wired network. So this is something we can do it also when we uh, want to make, uh, for example, a wireless for guests. So any guests coming to our office or to our home, then we can put them in a separated VLAN. And uh, that means we are having a separation on layer two and we are going to have separation on layer three. And of course, we can also apply quality of service if we want. We can do some firewall rules on that VLAN. So we do have a lot of possibility to do when we work with VLANs. But for now, to make it simple, I have a Microtech router, which doesn't have any configuration on it. I want to configure it to have the internet. So those steps, I'm going to go fast with them because I have already explained in another video about how to connect the Microtech router to the internet. So that's one thing. The second thing I'm going to make first step is to put the wireless, anyone connected to the wireless to be on a separated VLAN and anyone connected to the ports uh, of the Microtech router to be also on a separated VLAN. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you that step by step using the latest uh, Microtech router as version 7.6. So let's go directly and start with the lab. So uh, this is uh, my lab scenario. Actually, it's uh, straightforward. I have one computer connected to the Microtech router. Uh, of course, the IP is not correct, so it shouldn't be 192.168. I'm going to put another IP. But yeah, that's it. Computer, Microtech router, Microtech router to the internet, and the Microtech router needs to be uh, connected to the internet. And we need to do the VLANs, one for the wireless and one for the wired network. So let's go directly to the Microtech router. So this is my router over here. Again, I do not have any configuration on this router. I only put a password and I'm connected to the port Ethernet too. So let's do the configuration. So we have... a. Uh, uh, this router connected to the internet. So I will go to IP DHCP client and I will enable the DHCP client on Ethernet 1 interface. So this router is now able to go to the internet. So if we pick to a .a .a .a, we can see it is connected to the internet. All right, very good. Now, the second step that we need to do is to think of first the wireless. So we need to put the wireless on a VLAN. So on this router, if you look on the wireless, I do have two uh, wireless LAN, uh, so two wireless LAN interfaces, one for the 2.4 and one for the 5 gigahertz. Let's enable both of them because I want to use both of them. Then I'm going to make a password. So anyone connected to the wireless, he should put a password. So let's create a password. We make it very simple for this lab. I'm going to use the password. We used a WPA2PSK, of course. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So just to make it simple. Very good. Now I will go to the wireless on WLAN one. I will enable AP bridge. Let's use the N, so which is the latest technology on the 2.4 gigahertz. Of course, here you can do many things more, so you can see what uh, frequency we should use using the frequency usage. But I'm going to make it very simple for this lab. I'm not going to make any uh, difficult things about the wireless, uh, configuring the wireless, but the, because my point is to show you about how to do the VLAN. So I will leave everything the same, same SSID, same frequency, same channel band. But here we have just to put a the password that we have uh, configured, which is profile one. And then I will say, okay, I will do the same on WLAN two, which is for five gigahertz. I will say AP bridge. I'm going to use in this case, uh, only AC. So same SSID and I'm going to make it profile one and that's it. So now, uh, we go back to the router because we got disconnected. Just let's check if everything is correct that we have done on WLAN 2. So AP bridge, the profile one, this is all fine. Also WLAN 1, all fine. So now the wireless is enabled, but of course anyone connected now, he doesn't have IPs at all. So now we have to think of making the VLAN. Let's say that this wireless, so anyone connected to the wireless WLAN 1 or WLAN 2 will go to VLAN, let's say VLAN 10, okay? Very good. So now what I need to do, I have to bridge them together. So uh, 
because I want that uh, the uh, two uh, um, anyone connected to the wireless to go to the uh, internet. So let's uh, put a bridge. I will call it bridge WLAN. So this is a bridge WLAN, and I'll put inside this bridge. I will put the WLAN one, and I will put the WLAN two. Very good. Now. We go one step back to the wireless inside the interfaces. We said that those are going to be on VLAN 10. So if we scroll down over here, you can see you have VLAN mode. We have uh, no tag and VLAN ID is one. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use tag and anyone connected to this wireless will be on VLAN 10. So this is for the 2.4 gigahertz. I will do the same for the five gigahertz. So I'll go down over here. Anyone connected to the uh, wireless on uh, 5 GHz, I will use the tag and I will say it is on VLAN 10. Excellent. So now we have to do the configuration of the IPs. All right. So remember, anyone connected now to the wireless, he will be on VLAN 10. But do we have a VLAN 10 giving IP addresses? We do not have, right? Because we need to have a VLAN 10 to give IP address. So I'm going to go to the interface and I'm gonna create a VLAN interface, which is, I will name it VLAN 10, VLAN 10, and I will put it under the bridge WLAN where we have the two uh, uh, wireless uh, LAN. All right, so I'll put it over there. So what is gonna happen now is that anyone from, for example, his phone connected to the wire should go to VLAN 10, but then there is an interface called VLAN 10 that I'm creating now, which will have an IP address, and uh, we'll also configure the HTTP, so this will provide for uh, the users the IP address, uh, the subnet mask, the gateway, and uh, the DNS. All right, very good. So I will say here, okay. So the VLAN 10 has been created. Let's put on it an IP address. IP address. I'm going to use the range of 10.10.10.1 as being VLAN 10. So we make it like this. And I will put it on the VLAN 10. Oops. Vinantan. Yeah. So this has an IP. We create now a DHCP server. So anyone connected to the wireless will get an IP address from the, the DHCP server on the VLAN 10. Next. So that is the range correct. This is the gateway correct. These are the range of IPs, DNS, and that's it. Now, the last point to do is to make the, uh, of course, the NAT, because if we don't have NAT, then the local IPs will not be able to go to the internet. So I have to say IP, firewall, NAT, anyone uh, from source NAT. So I will say here, out interface Ethernet one, which is my one. The action is to masquerade. And then, okay, very good. So for now, anyone who is connected to the wireless, he should be able to be on VLAN 10 and have an IP and be able to go to the internet. Let's check. I will take my phone now and uh, I will go from my phone. I will show you my phone in a moment on the screen. All right, so uh, this is my phone. Let's bring it here. Yeah. So this is my phone now. If I connect, this is the Microtech, you see it? If I connect to Microtech, then uh, normally it should ask for the password, but I think because I made it before, it didn't ask for the password now. If you want, we can just, yeah, let's remove it. Oh, that's fine. We, we can we can look about the information now. So look, he got an IP, if you see here, 10.10.10.254. .10 .10 that means from VLAN 10. Excellent. If I go back now to the router and I go to the IP uh, DHCP server, we can look at the lease. So here we go. He got an IP of 10.10.10.254. He connected to WLAN 2 and then he got this IP. Now, if I want to do Torch to see if it's really on VLAN 10, so I can go to Tools. I go to Torch and uh, we said it's connected to WLAN 2. And then I make Torch. Actually, uh, it is connected. Yeah, to WLAN 2, correct. So look, the VLANs 10 are showing up. So I just need to make some traffic from my phone. Let me just issue a ping or whatever. So uh, just to show you what's gonna happen. So this is the ping has uh, started. 
So you can see I'm pinging to a.a.a.a. .a .a .a. You can see it over here. And it is putting on VLAN 10. So my phone is now on VLAN 10. So that is the best way uh, to make the separation on the VLAN for the wireless. Now, because it's connected to WLAN 2, I want to check um, if we disable WLAN 2. So the wireless, I will disable WLAN 2 so it connect to WLAN 1 and also to check if it's going to work. So I disabled WLAN 2 and now I can see it is on my phone. Let's check if uh, yeah, it is connected to MicroTik so I can show you here. So this is my phone. Look, it's connected now to MicroTik. So that means it's connected to WLAN 1. Very good. Now, uh, if we do again Torch, let's have a look if we can have Torch now open again. So if we look for Torch and now we go to WLAN 1 now and start and I will issue some traffic from my phone. So like ping, I have to put WLAN 1 actually. Start. So here we go, the ping, and it is on VLAN 10. So now I made both wireless interfaces to be on uh, VLAN 10. So now the ne next step is that I want that also the wired users to be on another VLAN, which is the VLAN 20. So I will stop this uh, now. Uh, let me also stop the ping on my phone so it doesn't stay pinging all the time. Now it's stopped and uh, let's now do the configuration and to show you how I can put also the wired users. That means anyone connected to the interfaces, which are uh, the physical interfaces, of course, Ethernet 1 now, because that's the one. So 2, 3, 4, and 5. So actually, I'm going to use 2, 4, and 5. I will leave 3 without uh, I make uh, on the configuration. So in case I did any wrong configuration, then I can still go to Ethernet 3 and connect to the micro router. Because I'm going to show you that once we enable the VLAN filtering on the bridge, then if you didn't do the configuration correctly, you may not get access to the router anymore. So I will leave the, the Ethernet, phase, uh, Ethernet 3 out. So I'm going to do two, three, two, four, and five. We put them on VLAN uh, 20. All right, very good. So how to do that? First, we have to create a bridge again. So here we have bridge for WLAN. We create a bridge now, and I will call it bridge for the LAN. Bridge LAN. All right. And uh, on the bridge LAN, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the ports which are Ethernet 2 on the bridge LAN. So we may get disconnected because I'm connected to the router on Ethernet 2 because we moved the port and we put it in the bridge. Anyway, let's continue. In case we get disconnected, we will connect again. I'll put 4 inside bridge LAN and I will put 5 inside the bridge LAN. Excellent. So now those are there. Now what I need to do is also under this bridge. Uh, so if we look here on the interface under this bridge LAN, uh, as we have done on the bridge WLAN, we put VLAN 10 under it. I'll put VLAN 20 under. So I would create an interface which is VLAN 20, and that's needed also for the DHCP, like uh, we have done on the uh, wireless LAN. So VLAN 20, I will call it, VLAN ID 20, and it is under the bridge LAN. Excellent. So we can see that it is under the bridge LAN. Very good. Now we go one step back again to the bridge, because on uh, uh, the wireless, we could make directly on the wireless interfaces, we say that this is going to be on VLAN 10. We made it on the wireless. While on the the, um, the uh, Ethernet ports, we cannot do that. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the bridge settings to be able to do the VLANs. So I'm going to go to the bridge, w, uh, w, it's actually the bridge LAN. And from here, before you enable VLAN filtering, that's the last step you have to do. Because once you enable VLAN filtering, you will not gain access to the router anymore if you did a wrong configuration. So before we do that, we have to go to the ports. And then we have to say, on the Ethernet uh, 2, I'm going to make it on VLAN 20. 
Yeah, that's what I have to do on VLAN on interface Ethernet 4. I'm gonna put it on VLAN 20 on interface. Uh, so three that that was three now four. I'm gonna put it on uh, VLAN 20. So I just put it inside VLAN 20, the interface two, four, and five. Excellent. Now I will go to the VLANs over here, and over here I have to say um, on the bridge LAN. We have VLAN 20, the tag, that means the one which has the tagging is the bridge VLAN and the untagged are Ethernet 2, 4, 3 and 4. So the interface which is going to be tagged is the interface uh, uh, bridge LAN and then the untagged are Ethernet 2, 3 and 4 because at the end the device does not understand VLAN so those should be untagged. And then I will say here, okay. Now the last step to do here is to go to the bridge and from the bridge to enable the VLAN filtering. But before I do this step, because we may not get contact um, if we made any mistake on the configuration. I don't think we did the mistake, but just in case. So before we do that, let's enable the DHCP server on the VLAN 20. So I will go to the IP DHCP server. And then we go over here, as we have done for the VLAN 10, we do for VLAN 20. So I would create the SCP server on the VLAN 20. So actually VLAN 20, we have to put an IP address on it first. IP address is going to be 10.20.20.1 slash 24. Remember, we have to put IPs before we uh, make uh, the HTTP the server. So on that interface, which is the gateway, should have an IP. Very good. And now I'll go back to the DHCP server on VLAN 20. Did this the range correct? And then DNS, and that's it. So now any computer connected to the ports 2, 3, no, 3, we didn't put it, 2, 4, and 5. Then when it sends the traffic to the router, then the router will see, oh, this is coming from that port, so I have to put it on VLAN uh, 20. And then to put it on VLAN 20, then it will, um, um, of course, uh, let it go from the VLAN 20 interface that we have created onto the bridge. Now, also, when it asks for an IP from the HTTP server, it's going to give it an IP address from the uh, VLAN 20, the DHCP server that we have made it on VLAN 20. So here we have still less step to do is to go to the bridge and then I make VLAN filtering enabled. And then I'll say apply and OK. Very good. So that's all what we have to do now. And now let's check if my computer will be connected. So I think I have already the interface open somewhere here. So here it's my interface. At this moment, if we go to the status, I'll make uh, details so it doesn't have an IP 169. So that's an IP pipe address. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to disable it. And then I'm going enable it again to see what's going to happen. So it's identifying now. Let's wait if it can get an IP. We go to status. Here we go. It got something. And I will check now on details again. 10.20.20.254. Excellent. So now my computer is connected to the internet and it's on VLAN uh, 20. So if you want, I can just do a ping from my computer. So let's open the ping and make ping to a dot a dot a dot eight minus t just to keep it open. So it is working. Now I will go to my router and I will make torch. So the ping is still uh, working, and then I will make torch. And let's make torch on the bridge. So I can see if the VLAN 20 will show up. Here we go. Look, this is the ping and it is on VLAN 20. So you can see this straightforward how you can do it and it's working perfectly. So now the last thing that I want to show you, let's stop the ping and the torch. The last thing that I want to show you is that I want to move my cable from Ethernet 2 and put it on Ethernet 4 to see if we are still be able uh, to be connected. So let's do again the ping. I will make the ping. Uh, make it open and then I will move my cable from Ethernet 2 and put it on Ethernet 4. So that is now on Ethernet 4 port, which should be also on VLAN 20. Let's see first. Here we go. Connected. 
and now if we go to the router and then we make torch again on the bridge line and we can see that here we go this is the ping coming from my computer and it is on vlan 20. excellent of course if we do the same on uh, the interface ethernet 5 it's gonna be the same so this is all what i wanted to show you in this uh, video again this is something that uh, it happened that uh, one of my customers asked me to do this congregation so i said it's a good idea that also to show you how this can happen and I'll make a video on it and put it on my youtube channel so if you like my way of teaching please do not forget to make a like subscribe and click on the bell because uh, the more i have uh, people watching my video the more i have traffic the more it's profitable for me and the more i can do videos like this video thank you very much for your time and till next time